Thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Thank um, you. We are the University of Tasmania uh, and you are here joining us for our engineering webinar. Um, we are very, very happy for you to join us to learn more about engineering at the University of Tasmania. So before we get into this content tonight, um, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land across all of the places you're joining us from here at the University of Tasmania. That's uh, often the Palawa Pakana people. Respecting Indigenous knowledge and perspectives is something this university is very committed to and something you'll see throughout your time studying with us. So in today's webinar, we will be covering why study at the University of Tasmania, why study engineering in particular. Uh, we'll look at some of our course options, including majors and pathways. We'll look at fees and scholarships, how to apply and enroll, um, as well as a Q&A session at the end. So we will have some time set aside at the end for the Q&A, um, but we don't want to run out of time. So please ask any questions you have as we go. If you look along the bottom of your Zoom window, you should see a Q&A button that we have highlighted here um, on the screen. So you can enter your questions using this function uh, and we'll answer them as we go, as well as a recap at the end. Um, and at the end of the webinar, you'll also be prompted to share some feedback on your experience tonight uh, through a quick survey. And we'd really appreciate your responses as they help us improve these webinars for the future. So tonight we're here to talk about engineering, but before we do, I want to take a moment to talk about studying at the University of Tasmania as a whole. We have an 82% satisfaction rating with teaching quality and engagement, which is above national averages. We also have excellent graduate outcomes with an 82% full-time undergraduate employment rate four months after graduation. These stats come from two national student surveys called the Student Experience Survey and the Graduate Outcome Survey that measure student satisfaction and outcomes across the country. We also have a really strong student support program, both on the academic side of things um, and support for other aspects of students' lives. There is always, always somebody here to help you. And lastly, we're number one in the world for climate action. We are incredibly proud of this world ranking um, and we love to share it with everybody that we can. Um, this is from the Times Higher Education Impact Rating Rankings, and it looks at everything we do as a university as a whole, including what we teach, the research we do, and the environmental impact of our physical teaching spaces. The university has a genuine commitment to sustainability, and it's really at the centre of everything that we do. So now I will take a moment to introduce our presenters. Uh, we have Professor Andrew Chen, who is the Professor of Engineering and ICT. Um, and um, head of our civil engineering program, and Dr. Ben Miller, who is a lecturer, lecturer in electrical engineering um, and manages the electrical engineering program. So I'll be handing over to Andrew now. Thank you very much, Kate. And why do you want to do engineering at the University of Tasmania? And obviously, we are the only uh, only university in on Tasmania that offer. Uh, what we call a Washington Accord degree, which I will explain a bit later. And we are very well connected with the industry within Tasmania, such as Hydro Tasmania, such as uh, a, a lot of consultancy and a lot of the, uh, uh, the task network, the connection company. So we, uh, so we have a lot of industry connected lectures and you can work, you can learn from practical engineers and a lot of them Almost half of the engineers uh, working in the state graduate from us, and and they are developing innovative solutions and and and, and engineering sector. And one of the uh, thing that is very uh, uh, work very well with our students is that we have been what we call FSAE car for many many years, and we are one of the smaller university. What we actually come up very strongly as one of, the, uh, one of the teams in smaller university. And I think we reached uh, 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 the highest position of seven or eight last year. And we have transitioned from an internal combustion car and into an electric car. And every student, any student in, in our uh, engineering course can join in the 
in the uh, FSC car team. And whether you're a mechanical engineer, structural engineer, electronics engineer, electrical engineer, and we even have students coming from business helping us with the car. So this is something that, uh, and they changed the policy two or three years ago, and now everybody can sit in the car and drive it. So if you are interested, you, you can join it. And we have, uh, uh, as I said, we connect with our industry partner, which we will, I will talk a bit more about it, which is called the Prime Program. And we can have work placement opportunity with companies like GHD. GHD is a, a consulting company and they have a branch in Tasmania. And, and a lot of our students work with GHD and get uh, um, to work in other places, like uh, one of my students work in Queensland, and some of them actually work overseas. And Hydro Tasmania, Entura is, is a engineering branch, uh, engineering subsidiary of Hydro, and INCAT build well leading uh, uh, catamaran, and they have the, the longest. Uh, uh, the, the, the longest boat in the world. And now they are transitioning into electric boat also. Okay, next slide, please. So um, we are talking about uh, Bachelor of Engineering with Honours. And we actually, there are other degrees that you can do, but this is the main degree that we offered. And we uh, that, uh, this is a degree that is recognized by Engineering Australia, according to the Washington Accord. What is uh, Washington Accord? Washington Accord is something that is recognized in many, many countries, such as United uh, uh, not, not, such as United Kingdom, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and many places. And there are places that they haven't reached the Washington Accord status. For example, in China, only a limited number of universities reach the Washington Accord status. So the good thing about the strongest thing about the Washington Accord is that if you finish a degree with us, you can continue to work in another country and to become a, re a charter engineer in any of the country. For example, myself, I am a charter uh, engineer in Australia and also a charter engineer in United Kingdom and also a charter engineer in Europe. So uh, an engineering degree will take you a lot of places. I have been in Hong Kong, United Kingdom and in uh, Victoria before I come to Tasmania. So uh, we have uh, a number of different disciplines within uh, engineering. And you can study the first year either in Hobart and Nonsestan, but if you want to continue in civil engineering, electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, you have to continue it in, in Hobart. But if you want to continue in marine, uh, uh, maritime engi uh, marine engineering, then the offer is in AMC, which is in, uh, in non-system. So the engineering requirement is that you finish the uh, TCE and, and the thing is that you may, uh, and you can come in and that there are uh, ATA requirement and also uh, a school recommendation program. But on the other hand is that if you don't reach that uh, requirement, you can, take a, a number of units in the diploma level or complete a cert four before coming in. So there's the many ways of entering into our program, but the outcome will be a accredited degree that is recognized worldwide. So what is prerequisite is mainly method, math, mathematics method. And if you have uh, special, uh, if you have the special method that would be even better and a physical science or engineering or you curve from. So we have three main specializations. One is civil engineering, another is electrical engineering and mechanical engineering, which we will introduce in, in a more detail. As I mentioned before, we are accredited by Engineering Engineers Australia. And because Engineer Australia is part of the worldwide engineering uh, community. And so our degree is recognized worldwide. Next slide, please. So this is a typical um, curriculum for a student. And each semester, normally you would have four units. And, and if you, in special circumstances, you can have uh, what we call overloading. You can have five units, or if you don't want to take as many units or you're having a part-time job, you can take less than three units, uh, less than four units. But for international students, the minimum is two units. 
that you have to uh, enroll every year. So typically in each of the unit, the, you will have three, uh, three hours of workshop and one hour or two hours of tutorial or practical work each week. So, and the semester is 13 weeks long and, and then there will be three weeks that uh, the examination will be in those weeks. So in the first two, uh, in the first two semester, that, that is in the first year is common for all students. So you have to learn something about civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering before you decide uh, which specialization you want to go into. And in the second year, you still have some mathematics, but you will have specialization units. So you will, if you go into civil engineering, you may study materials, structures, and if you go to electrical, you may uh, study something about electric, uh, electrical power and other things. So in year three, and, and most of the units are specialized unit, but you have elective units, you can choose something that is of interest to you and at the right level. And in the final year, half of the year will be, uh, will be taken as an honors project and you will do a project, for example, if you are interested in analyzing a tall building, then you can, uh, you can uh, take up a project to analyze a tall building. And you can do research and you can uh, come up with some useful information. Next slide, please. So what is civil engineering? And if you look at the top picture, it's a very good uh, example of civil engineering. In the top picture is a is a, a artist impression of the Bridgewater Bridge, which is currently being built. And if you have traveled from Hobart to Launceston or even Hobart to uh, uh, to Brighton, uh, then then you will come come across the floating bridge. But now we are we are building a permanent one. So in in the picture up there, you can see that civil engineering can involve geotechnical, that is looking at the ground the bridge, which is structure, looking at all the roads coming into it, traffic, and there's slope that we are, have to cut and we have to look at slope stability and we have to plan the area around it. So we have to work with planners to work, with the, uh, to work on the project. And the picture down below is the, our new Infinite campus, a library, and it is a timber building and which has got uh, awards and if you have the chance, you should try to visit it. And this is a very beautiful building. And this is a, a, a very great thing for civil engineering. So civil engineering's design uh, and build structures like dams and bridges, pipelines, roads, and airports. We have more than 50 bridge, uh, dams in Tasmania. So there's a lot of work to maintain them and to build new infrastructure. And through project-based learning, you can tackle real world problem. And we actually have student, um, uh, have engineer working on the Bridgewater Bridge coming to talk to us. And we can work on industry focused program and gaining skills in design and analysis for civil engineering design, uh, their career. And when you graduate, you can become a civil and structural engineer. You, you may want to build bridges, build roads, build high rise building and many things. And you can work in the design and consult, uh, consulting engineer side so that you can, uh, you can design buildings and you can uh, plan the th for things. And you can be a contracting engineer uh, and you can go into the field and supervise people to build bridges and buildings. And you can be a traffic engineer and other careers and, and requiring mathematics such as banking. We have quite a number of students graduating from us eventually working with the bank and making a lot of money, making more than us and into in investment and in other project management. And student with mathematical, uh, graduate with mathematical skill is highly sought after. So even if you, uh, after doing engineering degree, you decide not to be an engineer, there's quite still quite a very wide range of career uh, uh, that you can go into. Next slide, please. And Thank you, Andrew, um, and hello, everyone. So uh, electrical engineering is quite a broad field. And uh, as, as I've said on the slide here, it ranges everywhere from millivolts to, to hundreds of kilovolts. So if you look at the first 
picture there, you'll see a very large transmission line, and these will typically transmit power at tens of thousands of volts. So we have very high, uh, high voltage, high power, high current. And uh, this is what we would usually refer to as the realm of the uh, electrical power engineer. Uh, so obviously we have a lot of infrastructure in Tasmania for these things. Andrew mentioned uh, the dams for our hydroelectric systems. And there's a picture there that you can see of a hydroelectric dam cross section. There, there are a lot of working parts in these. There's obviously the civil and structural side of those, which is uh, which Andrew's uh, covered some of the aspects of. But inside of there, you have machines that are generate, generating electricity. You have the control systems that are controlling and monitoring those systems, uh, monitoring those machines. And if you look in the top right picture there, you'll see an integrated circuit uh, soldered onto a printed circuit board. And these are the chips that you would find inside of your computer and your phone and just about every electronic device. Um, these devices require uh, skills in, in programming, in digital electronics, analog electronics, control, all sorts of varying uh, skills, all of which uh, we cover. Given that it is such a broad field, um, as Andrew said, there are lots of things that you can go on to that aren't even necessarily engineering. Um, but the skills that you that you use here, uh, learn here, you'll continue learning once you get into the workforce. And the, the kind of careers that you can expect are around uh, electrical engineering or specifically electrical power engineering. As I said, that's for the, the generation and distribution of electrical power. Uh, electronics engineers. So when we say electronics, we're usually referring to that low voltage, low scale uh, type systems. And they tend to be very complex in a very small scale, uh, as opposed to the electrical power, which is complex on a national or even international scale uh, size of system. Uh, we also have mechatronics and control engineer uh, control engineering as a potential career path. Mechatronics is, uh, or you may may have heard of it more as robotics, it's where we use electrical systems or electronic systems to control uh, and, and get information from mechanical systems. Uh, and a control engineer might be uh, always very much related to manufacturing uh, engineering. And that's where we, we build systems, we design production lines and those sorts of things for uh, automation. And, and that's a very big part of electrical engineering is automation. We, um, in, in our, as Andrew said, in our first year, we have a cross-disciplinary um, environment. You are all studying the same thing in your first year before you branch out into your specialization. And to an extent, uh, we like to, to have influence from other disciplines that will mostly come through your honours project at the end. I have uh, honours students who are doing electrical engineering, but they may be uh, building a mechanical system like a, a robotic system or a drone or uh, some other kind of system that is automated. So it will it will behave by itself without necessarily needing human intervention. Uh, so there, as I said, there's a, a broad range of uh, potential career outcomes. All right, next slide, Thanks. please. So um, this is about mechanical engineering. Obviously, the first thing mechanical engineering we, uh, that comes to mind is car. And so the one that the car above is a electric car, and which is a chassis of an electric car. And at the bottom is a major, uh, 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 major size uh, mining machine, and they have a huge uh, mechanical system. So mechanical engineer ha has a lot of application, just like what we talk about electric, uh, uh, electricity generation, and, and also there's a lot of control and uh, system. And uh, one, of, uh, one of our graduate actually control a uh, salmon farm in, in the northwest of of, uh, of Tasmania from from uh, his uh, 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 kitchen table. So so there's a lot of things that that is happening there. So mechanical 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 engineers works in design, manufacturing, maintaining, and management across global industry. So their skills are essential for complex machines like ships, 
aircraft and automated systems. So I mentioned INCAT and I actually uh, men mentioned uh, Hydro Tasmania and many other companies. So mechanical engineering uh, specialization covers uh, cutting edge theory and design, just like what we were talking about, about cars and, and about welding and other things and offer an industry-wide uh, curriculum valued by employers. So uh, almost everything that is built, uh, that move, involves some mechanical engineering involvement. So obviously the career outcome of a mechanical engineer is to be a mechanical engineer, but they also can become a mechatronic or control engineer so that they control the lifts and control uh, a, a, a traffic signal and other things. And they can also become manufacturing engineer. For example, one of the companies in um, uh, outside Hobart is actually uh, in Kingston, is actually working on, on the... Uh, fuel injection system for drones. And that, that's a very complicated electronic and mechanical uh, work. Okay, next slide, please. So one of the things that we have started the year before is to have a more uh, professional integrated uh, degree. So we have what we call primed program. We work with industry so that we can work with, uh, so that we bring engineers, practicing, practicing engineers into us. Uh, so that they talk to our students and a lot of times they bring uh, pizza and try to get you some uh, guest the student a good meal and try to uh, allow them to talk to the engineers and this allow them to gain real life experience through classroom activities and 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 each student in order to get the degree they have to do at least 12 weeks of industry experience and usually this is in the summer between third and fourth year and this may be paid and it will, uh, this could lead to a graduate role. And on the right, you can see uh, uh, one, of the, um, one of the practical work for first year students, they have to build a bridge. And, and in this one is out of some wood and it may be out of some other material and test it uh, to see how much load it can take. So in, in our course, it's not just theory, but you have to actually work on something and make something work. And this is quite true in our FSAE car, electronics, mechatronics, and in civil engineering. Next slide, please. So, uh, Kate. Yeah, we're jumping back to me. Thank you, yeah. Andrew and Ben. Uh, so if you are applying to us and you don't meet the entry requirements into our Bachelor of Engineering, um, we do offer a pathway. So we have the Diploma of University Studies with an engineering specialization. Within this program, you do a combination of courses to improve your academic writing skills with the first uh, with two first year engineering units um, over a year of study. This will give you a guaranteed entry into the Bachelor of Engineering with 50 credit points, which is the equivalent of half of first year. So yeah, within this program, you'll cover off that academic um, writing, you'll go through the fundamental um, requirements of university and tertiary study. Um, you will take your maths, physics units, um, as well as its compulsory units, which you can see in that middle box there. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great way to prep yourself into um, a tertiary degree while still um, enabling yourself to receive credit towards that full degree as well. And get to meet um, our wonderful academic super program too and get ready for your second year. Jumped ahead. Um, so we do have time for a dedicated Q&A at the end. So we've had a few questions filter through already. Um, and I can see that Erin um, and Andrew are answering those. Um, but please go ahead now and pop in any questions that you have using that Q&A function. But before we get to those questions, I just want to take a minute to talk through some of the support we provide to our students. We offer support in a wide range of areas covering all aspects of your student experience. In the study support space, some of the options available to you are PASS, which is our peer assistive study sessions. And these are casual study sessions led by students who are one or two years ahead of you. They will have recently completed the units you're doing and they are able to help you with all the tips and tricks they've learned from their own experience. Uh, we also have student advisors who can help you with things like which units to enroll in, how to plan your study, um, potentially look at overseas exchange opportunities, uh, as well as connect you with other student support services. 
You'll also have access to learning workshops and a 24 hour study support pl platform called Studiosity, where you can submit draft assignments uh, for feedback and chat online with a subject matter expert. Jumping on to the next slide. So don't let costs get in your way. Um, degrees in Australia, they are priced by unit. Um, so individual subjects, so the total cost can vary across each degree. Um, we can't unfortunately give you an exact number for what each degree will cost, um, but we recommend jumping onto our course handbook um, to have a look at the individual uh, unit prices. Um, you will also need to pay a student services and amenities fee uh, each study period um, as well. So at the moment, that's looking at around $351 um, annually, and for part-time students, that's $263. Um, all of our undergraduate degrees are Commonwealth supported places for domestic students and you can get a help loan, which is a higher, um, yeah, the help loan to cover the fees, which you will only start to pay back once you earn over um, designated salary that is currently set at $54,000 a year. We also have so many scholarships available. Um, they are um, they range from academic scholarships through to community involvement. We've got equity, diversity, and sport achievement scholarships. Um, applications are now open with many closing on the 31st of October. If you are thinking of applying with us, start your application, of course. Um, if you've already received an offer, you're waiting on an offer, also submit your application for scholarships. Um, in a lot of cases, if we have scholarships that are on, offered on a rolling basis, the earlier you can get your application in, the earlier you can potentially have that scholarship. Um, as well. And every single year, there are scholarships that are unallocated. So if you see something that you think you're eligible for, absolutely put in an application for it. We just never know if it's the one for you. We have the money here. We want to give it <laughs> to, our, to our wonderful students. Um, and we can only uh, award those scholarships and people actually apply for them. Um, so yeah, instructions on how to apply is jump into our scholarships portal and complete a personal profile and you will be able to apply for multiple scholarships at once through there. Alrighty, if you haven't already applied, you can do online. Um, go to our website and follow the step-by-step -step process. If you are a current Year 12 student joining us tonight um, and you haven't applied for our early application program, unfortunately you have missed the deadline for that. So that is our school's recommendation program. But you can still submit an offer from any point from now until early January, um, where you will be able to uh, be assessed on your year 12 results. So we'll just wait until you've completed your year 12 uh, and your results will be available for our admissions team to assess you. Um, the next step after you apply is that you receive an offer and you will be asked to accept that offer uh, within the application portal. Uh, this lets us know that you want the place um, and allows us to plan ahead. It allows us to start putting in classes for timetabling um, and a whole bunch of boring admin stuff that you don't need to worry about, but it is very helpful for us if you accept the offer as early as possible, um, as well as accepting then does enable you to be assessed for those scholarships, um, as well as knowing that you probably plan for accommodation and things like that, um, that you'll also want to get a jump on. Um, after you've accepted your offer, you will be able to enroll. When you enroll will depend on who you are as an applicant. If you are a current Year 12 student, uh, enrollment won't open until after you've completed Year 12 and your results have been released. So you can receive that offer as a Year 12 student, accept your offer as a Year 12 student, but we do just need to wait for your Year 12 year to be complete before you can then officially enroll into those units. If you are a non-Year 12 student, um, you will be able to Enroll into your units uh, as soon as you've accepted that offer, as 2025 uh, enrollments are now open. Okay, if you are physically in Tasmania, you can come along to one of our Know Your Options um, sessions in December. This is a great opportunity to get face-to-face -face support uh, with your enrollment and to make sure you're selecting all the units uh, and getting everything sorted of for semester one. If you're not in Tasmania or would like some support a little bit sooner, uh, you can phone us Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., so standard business hours, on 138827, which is 13UTAS, um, for assistance enrolling, and our contact centre staff will be able to assist you with that. 
And now we're into the Q&A section. I can see that quite a few have already been answered, um, but I do have a question from an anonymous attendee. Um, someone has completed year 12 in 2023 in Victoria. Um, they did English, methods, general maths, environmental science, and they'd like to know if they are still eligible to apply for engineering. I would think so, but but I have to check because I I don't do. Uh, when do you deal with um, an, a, a entrance requirement directly? Uh, no, I haven't dealt with okay. that one directly, okay. so I'm not sure. So so I I I I suspect so because because if you have maps method and general maps, that means uh, that means you you actually we we talk about that one of the most important indicator of whether you are successful in engineering is is whether you are doing well in maps so i i suspect that it would be okay but it would be better if you can contact us i have a feeling that you may need to do chemistry or physics so we can double check that for you um we'll give you some contact information uh after this webinar um that you'll be able to reach out to us directly if you want to be able to then provide us with your personal details if we can send you an email um, but I do suspect that you might need physics or chemistry, um, in which case we do actually have a foundation program that you can roll into over the summer, um, but we'll double check with those units there whether that's um, suitable for you. But for now, pop in an application um, and everything will be assessed with that application and you will receive an offer that is either conditional upon completing one of those foundation units or an unconditional offer that says you've already met all those requirements. So first step, definitely make that application. Does anybody else have any other questions? And while we're waiting to see if any other questions come through, Andrew or Ben, do you have any other fun engineering stories that you might want to share? If there's no other question, look at the bridge behind me. And I think a lot of you has, has gone through this bridge a lot, which is the Tasman Bridge. And you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six support here. But if you look at the north side, you will see one, two, three, one missing and two others. So why is there one missing and what is down there? Okay. Something happened before you were born. So uh, I'm sure that it, it happened before you were born. <laughs> And for in Ben's picture, you can look at the antenna up in the in Mount Wellington. Yes, 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 yes. And it looks quite small actually when you are up there. It's very tall. It's very tall. Whether you while, support while people are trying to. Oh, okay. We have we have one answer there. Yeah. Yes, a boat hit it. That is exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly. And the boat is still down there. Mm. <laughs> Which is an inter a very interesting engineering challenge to have yeah. a, a boat at the foundation of such mm -hmm. a large structure, especially when you've got to deal with the the tides and uh, and other mm -hmm. issues there. Yeah. What um, would be? Oh, no. Sorry, go on, Andrew. No, no, there's a question coming up. Uh, yeah, on. yeah. So there's a question there. So what would the advantage of doing a double degree of science and engineering at UTAS offer? Um, I, we've had quite a few students um, doing the double degree. One of the uh, one of the things that you'll find in engineering is that there, there are just so many different things to learn, so many different things that, uh, or different career paths that you can take. Um, doing the double degree can help you specialize beyond what you can otherwise fit into a standard four-year bachelor degree. So for example, if you want to really hone in on uh, say a, a, ro an, a career in robotics or something like mm. that, then you can do the electrical degree, but you can also mm. take um, a, a degree, a double degree in science. And on the science side, you can do additional physics, additional um, programming and embedded systems and those sorts of things mm. uh, that you just otherwise wouldn't be able to fit into a four-year degree. Mm. And someone who is interested in environmental engineering, and you can do a double degree with en environmental science, and there's a lot of things that you can learn from that. Mm. And okay, I, I was trying to say uh, about Mount Wellington. Is that whether you support or you are against the cable car? But it's a the cable, <laughs> oh, the cable car, car is a right. very interesting, very yes. interesting engineering project. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I'm not. I'm just sorry. I'm just looking at the next question before I before I address what you just uh, asking about, Andrew. Yes. Um, Kate has another question there. I'm not sure yes. what the answer to that one is, though. Uh, if if you have a double degree, you 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 get a science degree and an engineering degree. It's not it's, it it is not just an engineering degree. So with a double degree, you would graduate with two separate degrees. Yeah. Um, so you would graduate with that Bachelor of Engineering with your specialization, as well as your Bachelor of Science and that specialization. Mm. Um, the way that double degrees work um, is that the elective units within each degree allow you to kind of like fit the two degrees together and those elective units count towards both degrees, mm. um, which allows you to complete two degrees mm. in a shorter period of time. Um, and allows you to kind of tailor that study. So whether it's with us or not with MSCB elsewhere mm. in Australia, a double degree will give you two completely mm. separate qualifications that may talk to each other and be really fantastic in a really targeted career path um, that you plan to do, or it could be something completely separate like a fashion group in music and your main engineering degree, but they are, they are two completely separate degrees. And if you complete the course requirements for both of those, you will graduate with both qualifications. So so the, the for the double degree is typically five years and roughly uh, two third is engineering and one third is, is science. And you you have to do a project which comp uh, encompass both, uh, both areas. And in terms of the the follow up question there, yeah. um, how full would the timetable look? Uh, your timetable each uh, each yeah. semester is going to be the same. It's just that you would uh, study for extra years, or yeah. depending, exactly. on, depending on the combination yeah. of units that you take. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you want to know what happened to the to the missing missing pillar, you can go to the Maritime Museum, which is in, in the center of Hobart, and they have a very big model uh, showing what's happened there. Okay. And uh, just to pick up on what you were getting at before, Andrew, with the cable car, um, <laughs> it is an interesting one because as an engineer, I, I like to jump straight to the solution. How would I build it? How would I, how would I do that? But um, one of the things that we'll certainly teach and, and that you'll pick up through your industry engagement as well is that um, before you can answer the technical questions, before you can apply science and maths to a problem, you, you have to think about the, uh, the impact on people, the impact on the environment, um, a, a lot of social and uh, environmental issues that have to be considered. And so they, they are factored into our degree and, and you will cover those. Um, and in, in fact, um, Andrew, you mentioned the climate safe climate engineering safe. focus yeah. that we are shifting towards and, and through some of the that program, uh, that's going to only increase that awareness of, mm -hmm. um, of what's going on around the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. Actually talking about environmental stuff, I actually teach my student about the Macquarie Point uh, possible uh, stadium there. Again, we are not talking about whether we should build a stadium or not, but there's a lot of environmental challenges with the land over there. And, and so uh, engineering is very practical and very close to home. Wonderful, thank you so much. I think we've come to an end on the Q&A section there, but if anyone uh, who's here has any follow-up questions, please reach out to us uh, and we'll be able to answer all your questions um, at a later date. Um, you can also uh, arrange for a session with um, one of our student recruitment team um, or just send through an email uh, and we'll be able to get back to you that way. Um, yeah, we just like to thank you so much, everyone, for coming along tonight. Uh, you should receive this as a webinar recording um, in a follow-up email. It should be coming out tomorrow, I hope, um, otherwise later in the week. Um, and that, again, will allow you to ask any follow-up questions that you have as well. So have a wonderful night, everybody, and thank you for joining us. And thank you so much, Andrew um, and Ben, for uh, co-hosting as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.